Uh, well, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, it's great turnout. I know we switched to the new audio, or the new video conferencing platform or, or web conferencing platform. So I, I appreciate everybody uh, their patience and in, in getting this worked out. Um, as a reminder, we record these meetings. Uh, we post them on YouTube after the fact for people who who couldn't be here, um, so they can uh, so they can participate and keep up with what's going on. Um, pretty standard meeting. Um, <clears throat> I think we'll do introductions since John is new here, um, uh, and we have a, a enough uh, a reasonable number of people to make that possible. Uh, John, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my in? name is John. What's that? Oh, and what you're interested in and why you're here. Okay. Um, well, I my interest. My name is John McQueen. I'm from Broadcom, and my interest was kind of pulled in from the recent talks with. Uh, the OpenWRT, RDKB, the common framework uh, being defined, or maybe HAL abstraction for many of the network interfaces. So that's kind of been my pull. And so for me, I actively work on um, OpenWRT, RDKB products right now. Um, so yep, that's, that's what I've been doing. I didn't catch you. At, uh, where are you working? Uh, Broadcom. Uh -huh, okay. Thank you, John. Um, uh, who wants to go next? Luca? Uh, hi, everyone. So my name is Luca Perkov. I'm an um, OpenWRT developer, and uh, I'm running a company called Sartura. Uh, basically, we do uh, services uh, consulting. Uh, currently, in the company, there is 10 of us, and uh, yeah, 80, 90 percent of the work is OpenWRT related, and we do all sorts of things on OpenWRT, as you can imagine, the customers are asking for. So yeah, shortly that would be it. Thanks, uh, Kathy. Hi, I'm Kathy Jory. I work uh, for Arduino in the, in the Bay Area, and uh, we use OpenWRT on a couple of our platforms. And I'm a big fan of open source. Awesome, thank you. And John, Kathy is also the the chair of the of this peg. Um, Paul. Hi, Paul Blay. Uh, imagination Technologies. It's a good thing you're doing reintroductions because uh, my position has changed. <laughs> well, I was doing QA for the uh, department that deals with the creative program, uh, Imagination. I'm now owning the, the embedded side of things. So that's um, the, so, so Creator is, a, is an IoT initiative for Imagination. And um, Obviously, we have an IT framework, and we have gateways and constrained devices. So those gateways and constrained devices, the platforms, that's the bit I'm looking after now. Awesome. Uh, well, oh, and just to add to that, CI40 runs our main platform, main gateway runs uh, OpenWRT. So that's why we're here. Well, that's great. If that's great to hear, Paul. And I, I think that uh, that certainly fits very well with uh, all the things we're doing. So um, great to hear you're in that new position. Um, Thanks. Walter? Yep, my name is Walter Klutens. I work for Soft at Home. We are a uh, company that provides uh, gateway IoT and, and set box uh, software solutions for, uh, for operators, for, for big carriers. Uh, I am the, um, uh, the chief architect of the gateway and the IoT uh, division. Awesome. Thank you, Walter. Uh, Art? Sorry, I had to unmute. Uh, this is Art. I'm president of the Purple Foundation, a longtime Silicon Valley CEO, and had the opportunity to run multiple chip companies and one open source software company. So i uh, love to see what's going on with OpenWRT. Awesome. Thank you, Art. I think Jeremy was here for a second. Uh, I think he might be coming back on. He might be having trouble with his audio. Um, but Jeremy Abington also. Jeremy, are you there? I am, yes. Can you hear me? Awesome. Yes, we can hear you very well. Uh, we were just doing introductions. Could could you introduce yourself? 
Sure, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Jeremy Abington, uh, I work in the IMG Systems uh, MIPS part of Imagination Technologies. Um, so, uh, my guys run the, uh, the creator uh, development platform and everything associated with that. We've also got guys involved with the security aspects. Um, so, we also participate in some of the uh, security working groups in uh, purple. Awesome. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, so we can go right into our agenda. Uh, board farm status. There's not a lot of update on my end. Um, I have submitted um, the, the, the problem that I was having to Hauke. Uh, since it is a Lantica board, uh, there was, there's some problem with the size of the of the partitions. It's not what what was expected. Although I'm flashing the uh, the basic lead uh, support for that particular board, so um, it should work by default. Um, so I'm I'm contacting with him, and, uh, and we're going to see what exactly is going on. But no update there. Um, Anyone else have any update on board farm work? I probably should also before we get before we get into that, uh, I should probably tell you, John, are you familiar with board farm at all? No, I'm not. Okay, uh, board farm is a um, open source project that was released by uh, QCA um, maybe last year sometime, um, and it is a automated testing platform for um, testing. Linux devices, primarily OpenWRT devices, so you can test, um, you know, whether a image can flash, whether it boots, whether it, um, you know, you have proper um, routing through the through the device, whether you can get from the LAN side to the LAN side as expected, um, things like that. So we it's a test framework. Is that what you said? A test like a test harness? It, it, it's kind of it's a it's a piece of it's it's a Python it's Python software. Um, that you yeah. run, and then there's a set of tests that it runs. So it's, you can do automated unit testing, basically, um, on a actual device that is. Okay, so let's say it, I'm, I'm curious. Um, mm -hmm. Is it? I would like to get some input on people here too. Has anybody else used it here? Is it like for OpenWRT? I guess router type platforms because it expects that, and it gives you a good quick sanity of the health of that image that you're running. Yes, that, I mean I think that's a very good description of it. Um, it 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 isn't necessarily inherently required to be OpenWRT, but there are some assumptions that are made that probably are going to make it a little more difficult. QCA uses this internally for all of their testing of upstream images of OpenWRT on for all their all their uh, devices. So um, and we have a instance that we're running that we're trying to get more. Um, more boards over time so that we can make those uh, those results accessible to the community. So, um, you know, there's a new uh, build of OpenWRT. Does it actually run on these devices? And if not, when did it break kind of thing? So the community has a better sense of these problems when they happen. But it's certainly also usable internally, which it, it is. So, Paul, you, you I know you, you've you used it. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, we do use it. Uh, I mean, I would describe it as what it, what it offers beyond the standard you know, PyTest type framework is is the setup to make to make it um, test a gateway. That's really the key, I think, for me is that it allows you to set things up in such a way that you are specifically targeting a gateway you're testing. And, and so, what you said is you just need Python to be included in your file system, and you this is a set of scripts that you can build into that image and run. Um, not exactly. It's actually the the Python scripts run on a computer that is either um, that is connected via uh, serial to the the device you're testing, and then it that computer I, I call it a controller, but I'm not sure if there's actually an official name for it. Um, that computer then has connects out to a LAN and a WAN device that it, it then then SSHs into so it can do commands that go through the router. So in effect, there's there's really no, there's very few changes you have to make to your image itself that gets flashed. Oh, okay. 
Um, okay, so it runs on a connected device. Yes. And it, you can you, you don't have to do anything really to make allow. I mean, any, there's no dependencies on the image that you're running. Very few. I mean, it, it, there there are certain things like you know you want to do certain types of of testing. You may need to have a um, the image may be, have to have a particular uh, um, uh, a particular uh, binary available or something because that is part okay. of your test. But other than that, no, there's very few changes. Okay. So yeah, that that should give you a general idea. So yeah. So that's the update from uh, our the stuff I've been working on for our instance. Does anyone else have any updates on, on the work? I don't know, Paul, if you have any um, insight into that anymore. Or? Yeah, bit of a uh, well, I, I think it's very much the same as what I said last time. A bit of a, a mix around in how we work at the moment, but the the way that in, in terms of moving board for, forward is certainly under my team. Right okay. now, anyway, so that sort of thing hasn't changed. Okay. But there, there are a few things that we are thinking about doing, and it's as I mentioned last time, it's really just a case of getting the priorities to do them. Okay, makes sense. All right, well, awesome. Anyone else have any discussion on Board Farm? All right. Uh, funding open WRT projects. Um, we have the still have the two completed in the first round. Luca, are are you officially completed the with the soft and home one? Yes. Yes. So okay. I mean, we haven't um, discussed like closing procedure of the project, but in any case, uh, we really spent uh, a lot of work to get uh, soft at home uh, um, code, which is in their own build system. Um, merged into the OpenWRT uh, fashion. So mm -hmm. as a result, there are 23 uh, packages. And uh, we got the main program working. But at some point, due to the uh, soft at home uh, specific um, domain knowledge or their uh, UBUS uh, code or alternative which we don't know much about uh, we we have stopped at that point so uh, Walter can provide maybe more technical details why, why it's uh, as it is but uh, in a nutshell uh, we have uh, signed NDA with um, Soft at Home so we have shared this only with them for now and uh, we sent them a detailed document of where we are, what has happened, uh, what should be done next. And um, yeah, we actually had a call with Walter and his team, I think, on Tuesday, right, Walter? Walter, are you there? Oh. Maybe he's on mute. Yeah, no, sorry, uh, yeah, I was on I was on mute and I had to switch to the to the application to unmute myself. Um, yeah. on Tuesday. That's correct. I'm not aware, at least. Did you organize something with our team, or uh, is, or was it last? I know we met and we you sent that meeting notes. That was this Tuesday, right? Oh, wasn't it? Tuesday. Okay, I was th thought you were talking about the next meeting. On uh, yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, yes, correct, correct. We had a call on Tuesday. Yes. Yes, and uh, there are some next steps that needs to be taken. Mostly, I would say, on soft at home side, and there are some like um, technicalities, like sticking the license on the code, and um, yeah, there is some additional um, thought process that needs to be carried out, such as uh, how to best handle their open source version and the version that is in-house, like how to handle uh, security patches and things like that. But this is something that, I don't know, uh, they will give some thought, we will give some thought, uh, discuss, and then move on to the next step. Um, what is obvious that there will still be some time um, 
uh, invested from our side, but uh, yeah, we will see how much is it, and then we will discuss it with uh, Soft at Home. But in any case, uh, I consider that we have really delivered what we said, mm -hmm. and uh, Walter, if you can confirm that, uh, that would be great. Um, yes, uh, so the, the, the current status is that uh, it's been delivered to us with a built environment and the packages uh, working so that they should be able to run in an open WR team. Uh, our team still needs to set up that built environment and test that. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to fix the copyright and license headers before we can open source it. That's the, that's the, the first step uh, then. And then really before we release it, we want to make sure that it's actually functionally doing something and contacting an, an, an ACS for which our team still has a, has a few small things to do. So the, uh, the only blocking factor for open sourcing it is that we need to go through manually and change all the copyright headers and add uh, the, the appropriate license. And I would also like to add, so currently it's hosted on our private Git repo because we wrote instructions and everything and then we would have to change it in a lot of places. So yeah, you should also copy it yeah. somewhere else and yeah. Correct. So, so we, we will we will do the same thing that ADB did. We will set up an, uh, a GitLab um, and we will share with everybody who asks for it. Okay. Uh, do you have any sort of uh, timeline or general sense on when that when that would happen, Walter? Um, I have to check with the developer to see if he managed to get around to uh, listing to finding the, the appropriate copyright header and the list of components that uh, that exactly need to be uh, released. Uh, so let me check with him tomorrow. Um, I don't have a hard timeline. Uh, and also there is that components.h header file that you might yep. want to polish uh, a bit. Yes, so um, there are a few things that Arturo has, uh, has noticed that are relevant in our built uh, environment but are causing somewhat of an integration problem in an OpenWRT built environment. We will do our utmost to make sure that we go to a single source, meaning that we don't keep an internal version of our repositories and then a patched version uh, for OpenWRT and for an open source release, but that we actually use exactly the same source code. We will change our components in the appropriate way so that it can work under our built environment and, and, the, uh, and the, the one from OpenWRT, so that we will keep feeding uh, patches of, uh, that we have done in our codes into the open source repositories. We don't want this to be a fire and forget. We want this to be a permanent process uh, to, to do a, a proper open source project. Um, my suggestion would be, and uh, I will share it with the, the rest on the call here, is uh, let's do these technicalities. And uh, yeah, when you are ready, share the code, but share it with a selected few because when we are finished with the cleanup process, then I would like to advise that we like um, uh, rebase the changes so it's not messy in Git history, and then you make it like publicly available if it's what you want to do. That that would be my uh, suggestion because yeah, otherwise it may look a bit messy and there is no reason for it to be unless you really want to rush out and publish it, but yeah, that, that, that would be my advice and suggestion. Well, Luca and Walter, this is Art. Uh, I have to say we're under a little bit of pressure to get the open source implementation out because that was the, the main project goal. So uh, as soon as you can give us a, a firm deadline for that, we'd appreciate it because, uh, as you know, Luca, we want to move on to the next of the next uh, open source stack as well. Um, okay, I'll um, I'll chase up some people tomorrow. Thank you, Walter. Okay. Um, yeah, just to be clear, so on our side, let's say we are done, and we can uh, just share the advice with the uh, Soft at Home team, and uh, yeah, so. The ball now is in soft at home <laughs> yard. So, um, okay. Right. Uh, 
Um, okay, so uh, also if with, I, I shared with some of you the uh, experiences of uh, this project, uh, but I'd like to share it with everybody. Um, so when we initially uh, um, yeah, wrote the statement of work and proposal, um, I didn't anticipate that uh, this will result in uh, 23 or 24 packages. Uh, we thought it would be like uh, two, three, maybe four packages, like it was the case in the in the ADB, uh, because they have a few of them. Um, thing is that um, Soft at Home has their own uh, build system, and uh, yeah, it's based on what we've seen was quite different. So uh, it required um, a lot of like figuring out and then uh, changing a few things in order for it to work on OpenWRT. I mean, we, we did all that and uh, we clearly separated this OpenWRT fi fix up patches uh, from uh, ADB one so they can like integrate them and it's clearly visible uh, for them uh, what has changed. Um, also, as, uh, as far as the collaboration went from the start, so Soft at Home delivered us a zip file with all the sources and then we, uh, it was, uh, all of these components were separated in folders and then we, uh, we went uh, one by one and then try to build it, uh, make a package, and then uh, it was building, and then we saw it's missing some dependency, so we went to that dependency, and then that dependency had some other dependency, and so on. Uh, we didn't contact Soft at Home team that much, which I don't know is okay or it, it, it's not okay. We, we wanted to uh, do it by ourselves. Um, some we really got stuck with that components.h file, which is um, some file that is generated by the soft at home system. And uh, basically, uh, that was the major headache. When, um, when we would go back, uh, I would definitely, it, I, I guess we would spend uh, less time if we uh, had a chat with uh, soft at home team and uh, they explained us the uh, inner dependency of the uh, different components so we know like what is depending on what um, but in an, I, I don't know but it's it wasn't that like hard or complicated it's just like um, really a matter of engineering work and uh, the time it's just 23 packages from a build system that yeah we saw from the first time and just trying to make it work so yeah I would say in overall um, not very hard project um, yeah so that would be my feedback Walter what would you say from your side uh, no, you you captured it uh, correctly indeed. Uh, it is true we are um, we we believe in a lot of uh, code reuse, so we've split up our implementation in many different libraries and components, and that uh, that for sure is a bit of a, a challenge. So uh, yeah, sorry. All right. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a good way to to. Uh, well, I'm glad that that <clears throat> everyone's learned things from this, and um, I look forward to to seeing the open source release, and we can get that out there and, and show off the work that that both uh, Luca's team and uh, and Soft at Home have have done. Um, Luca, so so you're ready to more or less move on to the AADB one? Um, yeah. So. Uh Eric has been pushing me to write the document, so I'll do that now. Please do. And uh, send it to, to Eric. Yep. Um, thing is that uh, I was traveling really half of the October boat and we met in Berlin, then I was in London and then in the, uh, San Jose. Mm -hmm. And um, 
yeah, a lot of work piled up, so I, then I got sick, and then, yeah, anyway, so now I'm getting back to track, uh, getting these things sorted out, and uh, basically we will uh, more or less write the same proposal as we did for uh, initial sort at home. What uh, I've seen uh, Felix posted earlier um, was that he provided some uh, demo API uh, uh, code, so we we will take a look at that and um, yeah try to figure out how to integrate it. Um, yeah, we we will start and then communicate with you like what is the status, what are our thoughts and. Okay. Uh, also, if others uh, can give feedback on Felix's API, whether it's uh, suitable um, or see some like other features that they would like to see, in, I think it would be good to provide Felix that uh, feedback. And yeah, so that would be uh, regarding the um, TR069 project. Uh, also, um, I've sent two other proposals that I can discuss if there are no questions on this topic. I was just thinking we could go through what Felix is doing, um, okay. and then and then we could go to that. Sound good? Sounds good. Awesome. So, th just wanted to give people an update. Uh, Felix has has uh, now uh, committed his and pushed his uh, initial implementation of the software configuration access layer. He's calling it SCAL. Um, that's the code name. I don't know if we want a better name, but that's what we got. Um, it, uh, it is on uh, the Purple Foundation GitHub. Um, it, uh, he, he, he said he couldn't make the meeting today, unfortunately. He, uh, it has support for plugins right now and the API, the basic API. Uh, through UBUS, um, it does not have support for access control. He's going to be adding that next, uh, but that is that um, should give people a sense. He also has a basic uh, sample plugin in the plugins folder. Um, so that would be uh, an example of how you could actually uh, use it um, and port a TR069 stack or some other type of stack to it. Um, I'm not sure what kind of questions you might have, because mostly I can't, I probably can't answer them. But uh, if there's something that people, uh, any questions that people have, maybe I can try. All right, um, completely understandable. Uh, we can move on to. Um, the uh, next round of funding, we've, we've actually gotten a few proposals. Before we go to Luca's, um, this is one that has not actually been sent into the, uh, to, uh, the uh, proposals um, email address, but is, uh, is, is going to be uh, Daniel Gohl, who, is a, who he spoke at the OpenWRG Summit. He's going to be on the, um, on the OpenWRG Summit committee. Uh, as well, he, he volunteered to join. He's a he's a dedicated member of the OpenWRT and lead communities, very active. Um, he came came with this idea on on how to develop a secure IoT hub, and the project is pretty big, um, but it is you can split it into a couple of different ways. Um, initially, his idea is that you can basically make um, develop a sensor API into OpenWRT um, and then make sensors available via UBUS. Um, use, and that could be sensors that are connected via GPIO or something uh, or one of the uh, standards for IoT because they're all slightly different. This would give you a standard API that you could basically say, if I want to connect to an IoT device, I, I can just do it in a standard way. I don't have to figure out you know, use the particular mechanism that that particular sensor or whatnot has. Um, he then want, is interested in going to taking that and connecting that to the GNU Net P2P framework. 
um, and he can present on that more. Um, I think that's probably a lot in one project, and I think um, the sensor connecting is actually very interesting as a first step, and that could be used whether you use GNU Net, P2P framework, or anything else. Um, I think it's an actually a really interesting topic. Um, I'm not going to do the presentation for him because he can do it better than I can, um, but I just wanted to get that on people's um, radar, that that is, a, I think, a really interesting topic. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's the that's the gist of it. Um, I'd I'd like to see. I will send email, or I will ask Inteno to send email mm -hmm. to see how this is similar to the an announcement that Inteno made. Uh, I don't know a few weeks ago mm -hmm. regarding uh, connecting OpenWRT devices with UBus. So you can execute UBus calls on a different device. Is there any overlap? If yes, mm -hmm. which and yeah, have have this discussion. Definitely. In general, though, I, I think um, this may be really interesting for promoting uh, OpenWRT in in the IoT space and making it even easier for people. Um, I don't know, Paul. Are you still on? Yes, I am. Is there a particular API that you're using um, for making sensors available on the Creator platform? I know Creator is really big in IoT, so I was just wondering. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the details. Um, I know we use the micro micro bus interface. I, beyond that, I'm not really sure of the details of how we're communicating with that. Uh, but I can check it out. Yeah. Uh, do we have a copy of this email? Because I was just thinking, I'm not sure if I saw it or missed it. Uh, um, but it would certainly help me to, to, to have those details so I can see the yeah, how that reflects with what we're doing already. Yeah, he uh, he did send it to the, oh, the the purple WRT list. So if you're on there, you should have gotten it. I probably oh. have it then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me check it out. It was only, I think it was sent earlier today. So it's quite possible you, you may not have seen it yet. So... I think okay. that's a that's that's an interesting project. So I think there's a lot of potential there. So I, I I'll talk with him some more and we'll clean uh um go from there when he submits it. All right, uh, Luca, do you want to take it from there? Do you have um, to sure. Uh, I don't have slides. Okay. Uh, I would just like to talk about these two proposals. Okay. Um, if it's okay with everybody, I would like to start with that RPCD mod. Uh, no SQL. Um, okay, so on OpenWRT platform there is UBus, which is a bus connecting all the demons. Um, de facto implementation for the bus on OpenWRT system. Then um, on top of that bus is also a tool called RPCD. This tool um, provides ability to load uh, extensions. Uh, so Linux uh, SO files, and uh, once it loads these extensions, um, these extensions can provide additional UBus, uh, UBus API. And um, so that's the infrastructure talk. And we, when we engage with uh, customers, almost always they have some special um, stuff they want to do. Uh, and very often uh, these special things that they are doing requires um, storing uh, information um, in some sort of text file or a mini database uh, which has specific set of requirements. So it's not like uh, configuration data which needs to go on the file system in UCI format. It's some kind of uh, operational data. So to give an example, um, when you want to like uh, open a Lucy page and see the live graphs of the network traffic, um, what happens is that once you open that page, you will see uh, the graph start moving because you don't have a uh, result of the network activity from before you open that page. So this is some kind of useful operational data which would be nice to store in some kind of a database. 
And then uh, once you open this Lucy page, you see like your network traffic for the last like I don't know, minute, five minutes or however you want to configure it for. Um, also, I don't know, when you want to keep track of uh, when some clients connected to the uh, Wi-Fi network at what time um, and some other uh, statistic information uh, like have 100 uh, entries of your uh, DSL uh, status of the DSL connection status and things like that. So this is some kind of operational data which you don't necessarily want to keep across a reboot, a reboot. You don't want to keep on the file system and uh, uh, do uh, where leveling of the flash chip, uh, etc. So uh, we see this as a really good use case to have some UBUS backed uh, NoSQL kind of uh, library uh, or a plugin where basically we would add some kind of um, special uh, things such as uh, it would be a key value store and in a, in a key you could define like keep uh, 100 rows of uh, entries so uh, you can have your application just push the data in and you don't have to worry about cleaning it up because the this database would um, would clean the old data or uh, remove it so you don't have to worry about that and like provide some kind of um, UBUS uh, based uh, operational data uh, data store where you can like push in any information uh, you want and uh, do it like this rather than uh, writing the information into a file then uh, when you want to interact with this information from a web interface for example then you have to read the file parse it etc 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 so just hook it to UBUS uh, and provide uh, users the ability to do with this component anything they want uh, rel uh, related to uh, operational data uh, and use it as they see fit. Um, we had in the past at least five use cases where uh, yeah this would be perfect solution and um, there were some discussions uh, by some other developers on the uh, list, uh, we replied to them, um, and yeah, kind of at that point, uh, co communication stalled. Uh, in any case, I would really like uh, to do this project because there are real, real requir requirements uh, in the industry for it, and in the community, like I said, Lucy graphs for networking and uh, from the past, etc. And this co this would be this component would be um, uh, you could include it in a build uh, or not depending whether you want it or not. Um, it's just it's just an addition to the OpenWRT uh, offering that is available now. Doesn't require some core changes. Um, as for the development model, we would do um, uh, a simple uh, proof of concept first, so it compiles uh, and um, provide the documentation and provide uh, our ideas uh, what other features we would like to add. Uh, then get uh, feedback on those and then implement those uh, further out in the open. I think that is the procedure that will work out best for this project. Um, and basically that's it. Um, document is out there so you can read it and provide some feedback. All right, uh, Luca, thanks. Uh, is there any, are any questions that uh, folks have on this topic? Uh, maybe just to give some idea to, to Katie, 
for example, Katie, you have uh, some sensors on your devices, so this sensor has read some kind of information. So if it's temperature sensor, you can like store it in this kind of data store and then uh, keep it around until there is network connectivity and then you send all this information back to the cloud or keep it for some time or forever depending on your use case. So, and it would be very easy to integrate even those kind of things. All right. I, I think it sounds interesting. I think it's a I think it's an interesting project. Um, but all right. Okay. If there are no questions, we can um, go on to the second one. We don't have we only have about twelve minutes left. Um, so um, second one is the basically so we know our way around OpenWRT. Uh, that's like I said, this is something that you do. Um, and there is a lot of talk about RDKB recently, and uh, I propose a research project where we will document our findings of RDKB, starting from simple ones like uh, how to get the source, how to compile it, try to run it in a virtual machine, uh, like baby steps, and once we do that, we would like to port some of the OpenWRT applications or application, depending on how complex it will be, to RDKB and uh, try and take some RDKB component uh, and make it as an OpenWRT package and uh, document this entire workflow and uh, experience um, so people who are familiar with one of these projects can take a look at this document and um, figure out how to work with other projects, right? Um, so I think it would be really beneficial. So somebody earlier on the call said that they are working with both of them. So I'm just wondering, are you like really working, compiling stuff and using it or it's just like, uh, I don't know, Yeah, this is John. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I, I've been, I'm not also the one yesterday when we were talking about this on the call. I'm the one who spoke up. Uh huh. Okay. So yeah, we're actively. I I'm actively working on RDKB. Um, so that was where I was. I was asking. I didn't see where. I see these as two different types of complete router application architectures, kind of independent of each other. There are components or with an RDKB that may be interesting to run on OpenWRT. And, um, you know, you could skim through RDK Central, which is the open source GitHub part of, um, you know, RDKB. Uh, but as it's kind of trying to put one, on, uh, kind of mix and match them together. I didn't see how that would what would come out of that? Because they're, they're, because one thing you could say is that, okay, if I was able to port RDKB as a router application onto OpenWRT, would, I guess the end goal would be, would, would somebody want to take an OpenWRT-based framework and use RDKB, maybe protocols or components? And that's kind of, since RDKB is new right now, I think anybody who embraces RDKB or RDKM is going to need as much help as they have of, from the source, which is kind of Comcast right now, and to go off and to do, to live on OpenWRT, which is kind of two derivations away from having control of the router, that may be a stretch. So that was just my opinion. Mm, okay. Um. From my point of view, um, if we keep talking about op, uh, RDKB, I think that uh, some somebody should uh, compare these two um, from technical point of view. Like this is how you work with one of them, 
uh, when you want to build some component, this is how you do it on, on this one. Um, and have this like documentation. Oh, you're saying kind of like a startup guide on how you work with both of them? That yes, and if, if you want like to move some component, or, or let's say now you have a product on OpenWRT and uh, you manage to sell to Comcast your application that can run on a router, you made your entire product on OpenWRT and uh, now you have to do it on NAT DKB, like where, how, you know, all these kind of questions will come up and uh, maybe vice versa, somebody did a DKB application and they need to do the same on OpenWRT because some other customer requires that. Um, so then, yeah, it could be useful uh, to have um, components, core components of one project integrated in the others, or at least guide how to do it. So yeah, that's basically what I'd like to do uh, is that uh, uh, we all learn uh, from RDKB or learn how to use it and write really good documentation for it. So anybody who is familiar with OpenWRT can, uh, after looking at these docs, uh, jump start in RDKB and hopefully do the other way around. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think even if to look at the RD RDKB, like I said, you. The RDK Central is a good place to see that framework. You know, Comcast has the RDKB internal, RDKM external, but they're they're very similar. So I didn't get that. So can you repeat, please? Um, the RDKB projects that that term is really a Comcast centric term. There's RDK Central which has the RDKM or management um, repositories of what's kind of equivalent to RDKB. And so if you, you know, you can get the code as an outside user from there where you can't get the Comcast, access to the Comcast Git uh, for RDKB. Uh -huh, but so you're saying that RDKB is not open source, and if we do open source work, we use the RDK Central? Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. Aha, OK. But those would be basically the same if you look at architecture, way of building it, stuff like that, but some secret source is missing from the open Correct. source one. Correct. OK. All right. Um, anyone else have any thoughts on this? All right. With that, I, I mean, I, I think we, we should move on then. We only have a few minutes left to the end of the hour. Um, and um, so thank you, Luca. Um, and uh, please, if you, if you have some thoughts, anyone does, please send them to the mailing list, to myself, to Kathy, to Art, to, you know, whoever, uh, to Luca, and, and please share your thoughts on, 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 you know, should these projects be funded and, um, and what ways they could be improved and, and so on and so forth. Um, we will rush through the rest of the agenda. Um, there isn't a whole lot um, to do, I don't think. Uh, regulatory update, uh, I am still participating on the subgroup. Um, we are probably going to send out a press release of my participation. We were delayed because of some strange internal rules around whether I am officially a participant or not. Um, for practically I am, officially it's not really clear. Um, but I am participating. I have another meeting today with a subgroup. Um, if you'd like to see the uh, document that we're working on, I can I can provide it to you, but they've asked that it be kept confidential. So um, if if you do want to see it, just let me know, and I'll ask you not to send it to anyone else without my permission. Uh, OpenWRT Summit, there's there's really no update. We're going to have a meeting in two weeks on this topic, uh, on with the committee. 
uh, carrier interest group update. Um, we had a meeting yesterday. It went. I would have to say that everyone involved would say it went very well. Um, there was uh, pretty strong commitments from uh, all the all the carriers or um, all the chip makers to work together on the topics of um, on on Wi-Fi, uh, LEDs, GPIO, and um, uh, push buttons to come up with um, common interfaces. Uh, there's some clarification that that uh, we need from um, Scott at uh, Broadcom because uh, he couldn't be there, so it was only via email. So unfortunately, there's some uh, issues there. Um, I don't know if uh, Walter, are you on the call still? Yes, I am. Awesome. Uh, do you, is there anything you want to summarize about the about the carrier interest group meeting yesterday and the conclusions? Since you're going to be heading up some of the, a lot of the, or you know, the work to organize defining these common interfaces. Um, I think that well, I think that everybody who would be interested in that was at yesterday's call, so maybe okay. it doesn't make a lot of okay. sense. Okay, that's fair. Um, so that uh, I think uh, went pretty well yesterday, and we're going to uh, keep moving forward on that. So, um, since we are to the end of the hour, is there anything else that anyone else wants to discuss? Hey, I just wanted to let you know I posted the uh, Open WRT Summit Board Farm presentation onto Basecamp, and maybe we should paste some of our other uh, Board Farm presentations there since we often get the question of what it is. Sure, we can do that definitely. Definitely, I can I can do that. Sounds good. All right. Um, anything else that anyone wants to bring up? All right. Well, uh, thanks, everyone, for coming to the meeting. Uh, we won't have a meeting next week since it is Thanksgiving in the U.S., um, so uh, most of us will be n unavailable, uh, but uh, we will meet again in two weeks. Uh, thanks, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, sir. Bye, everyone. Yep. Thank you. Bye-bye.